Hi there, welcome to Scrap and Coffee. So in today's video, I'm going to construct page style number one for the uh, uh, Peekaboo You Baby Girl First Year project. That's a mouthful, but <laughs> and page style number one is this page style with the large angled pocket here on the front, the flap and the angled pocket, the acetate pocket there, and the stack pocket on the back. So. Before I start, I want to explain to you the product that I'm using. It's not acetate, it's, yeah, I'm going to pronounce this really Dutch, Duralor. Duralor. Um, it's a 0 0.005 clear film. It's a product by Graphics. And um, I've tried this out because I've tried it with the 0 0.007 acetate. And you can score it, but it doesn't, the full intends to stay in a 90 degree angle, to my finding. So I've uh, come across this product and I thought I'm going to try it. And it worked for me. So this is what I'm using and I'm using it for every clear um, thing that you see on the page. So for the first straight one, you can use the acetate if you don't have to score it, but I... Just use the Duralor for everything because that was easiest. Just use one product. I've also tried the 0 0.003. That one is too flimsy. I, I don't recommend to use that one. So, um, yeah, I really like this product. But I just wanted to show you so you know what it is. I found it on Amazon. Um, yeah, you can find it there. Okay, so I've prepared all my pieces uh, of cardstock and I've also got all my Duralor pieces so that's prepared and I've so I've got it I've scored it and I've applied my tape but of course I will talk you uh, through it so let's start with making the actual uh, base page I have a lot of pieces here so we are going to start with piece A and piece B and that's going to form a pocket page and uh, piece A no score lines piece B two score lines tape goes on the dented side between the cut edge and your score line and I'm going to taper these half inches just because I prefer to do so uh, you don't necessarily have to do it for this piece And I always cut from my score line. That's also something that I personally prefer. So that's why I'm turning my pieces all around. And then I'm going to fold on the score line towards the bumpy side. And I'm going to give that a quick burnish. And that means that when we fold it, our tape is showing on the outside. So now that we fold it on those score lines, this B piece should line up. Let me keep that letter A in where we can see it. Should line up on four sides with your A piece. And that's how we are going to attach it. I like to turn it around and remove my tape backing here just a little bit so that I can line it up on the places where my tape backing is still in place. And then I give that a slight pressure there so it sticks. And when I'm happy with my placement, I'm going to hold it in place and carefully remove the rest of the tape backing. And then I peel off the tape backing on the other side. And again, I'm just giving myself some time to make sure that I'm still lined up where I want it because you might have shifted a little bit. And again, give that a quick burnish. So now we have created our pocket page. Then our next piece for the base page is piece C. My letter is going to be upside down. I just not want to confuse anybody. Piece C has two score lines here. And I've placed my tape on the bumpy side for this piece. So where you can feel the bump of your score line. For this one, it is important that you taper because we are going to place this in the pocket page and if you don't taper it it won't fit i'm going to fold and burnish both score lines and that can be a little bit difficult because this has a 1 8 inch gusset 
and it can be a little bit of pain in the you know where to get it all nicely folded so I'm just taking my time in pushing on that second score line and then turn it over and burnish it so I'm folded on my half inch score line now and that's where I want it to be I'm going to give this a dry fit because now I can make some alterations if I need to and what I want to do is I want to shove it in there up to that first half inch score line but I still want to see that score line there so you can fold it over nicely in my case everything fits so in this case I'm just ripping off that tape back in there and I'm going to place that in there without pushing on it so it doesn't stick and then where I've got it where I want it I'm going to push down on it and then we have our base page done I don't know where I why I what I did there instead of a C I made a tree I don't know why <laughs> but you'll get it okay so base page done now we are going to a little bit more of a difficult uh, feature at least I found it a little bit more diff difficult we are going to work with our cardstock pieces D and E and D is a pocket so you have three score lines tape is on the dented side between your cut edge and the score line on the three sides with a score line and I'm going to miter the corners now I've always cut my corners in a 45 degree angle to where the score lines meet so you don't have any overlapping you reduce your bulk that's a great technique I've always used it and I, I still use it but for this album I'm kind of experimenting with um, cutting it in this way where I'm cutting it with an angle towards the intersection that means you will have a slight overlapping of your flaps on the back side and also some bulk on the back side um, but I do find that it gives me a cleaner corner of the pocket sometimes when you miscut with your miter you don't have a nice corner and what it also it helps me I can stick my side flaps down with my large flap I will show you in a second and that helps me to uh, stick it onto the acetate uh, I don't have to worry about it sticking when I don't want it to stick so that's why I'm using this technique in this album so what I'm going to do is again fold towards the bumpy side and burnish and I like to do is stick the longer side on top of my short sides and I hope with that that it's a little bit easier for me to get my photo mats and stuff in my pocket later on so I will do that in a second but first I'm going to make an angle in this pocket so I'm going to lay this pocket on my work surface with the flap on my left hand side I'm going to get a ruler and I'm going to mark from my cut edge here on my right hand side on the top one and a half inches inwards just make a teeny tiny pencil mark there and then I'm getting my piece E in because I need to do the exact same thing there but no wait because I need to think about it I don't want to make a mistake there I get my paper trimmer in and I just have my flaps folded inwards this paper trimmer doesn't have any issues with that and I'm going to line up my pencil mark there with where my trimmer is going to cut and here the, the corner the right hand bottom corner and I want to have my blade on top of this because this is going to shove everywhere so again the pencil line there corner there on the bottom hold it firmly and cut it and then we have an angle in that pocket now I'm going to get my first piece of that Duralar and that's your um, I've called them the AC 1, 2, 3 or 4 uh, for short for acetate so this is my first piece 
and the pocket is gonna go line it up with three sides of your acetate piece okay i'm going to have a lot of uh, difficulties with pronouncing everything the whole time so what i'm going to do here and i should use a tool for that not my nails but i've peeled back a little bit of the short side of the tape and i'm pushing down on the long side so that stays in place and i will do the same thing on this side so now i don't this is going to stay like this and i have my hands free a little bit more i'm going to place this piece of acetate on my work surface where it's easy for me to reach and this will stay here it's uh, kind of static so that will stay on there but also my cutting surface is magnetic and I have some small magnets so just to make myself sure of it I can place some magnets on there then I'm going to peel back the tape backing here on one short side let me get a tool because I'm ruining my nails Come on, yeah, there we go. And just a little bit here on the long side, not too much. And then I'm going to line up here the first corner on the bottom. And you just have to take your time on this. It's hard to see your edges of the acetate and that you're nice on the corner. That's why I'm using the grid of my work surface so I know where I need to be on the bottom. Carefully stick that and then try to hold it in place here and I'm going to have a little bit of overhang I see but that's okay not too much and then I'm using the same technique I'm holding it in place and carefully remove my tape backing and then I need to do the short side here and that's not too bad so then that pocket is on there. So piece E is going to be the flap, what we are going to use to attach it to our base page. And here we also, have, we also cover up the tape here, because we don't want to see that of course. So we have to make the same angle in this piece. Now this is going to fold towards the bumpy side as well, so let's prepare it so we can see where we need to make the angle, so we don't make any mistakes. So I'm tapering that half inch flap because I'm going to place it over the whole length of the page. Hide construction with your pattern paper. And now this is going to be on the base page. Like that. So this part here is going to be attached onto the acetate. Like that. So I need to make my angle from here to there so I'm going to measure where's my pencil I've already lost my stuff oh it's nice get another one I'm going to measure one and a half inches from the top there and cut that angle And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my tape. Just make sure that this gives it a nice coverage there. Yep, that would be nice and fine. So I'm going to apply some tape here on this side so we can stick that onto that acetate there. And I'm just using quarter inch tape. That's going to be enough to cover it. We don't need our... Well, I always like to save on my 3 8 inch tape. Okay, so that's on there. Now you can do this with wet glue or combine it with wet glue, but I'm really scared of using the wet glue on this acetate because if you 
If it's smushing out somewhere, you're not going to be able to hide it or clean it. It's, yeah, I find it scary. <laughs> so again, I'm just checking and then I'm thinking, okay, from what side am I going to start? But I think let's just do it here. And I'm not removing the tape backing completely at once. Just give myself some time so that it doesn't stick somewhere where I don't want it. But I do remove this one in the middle because I'm not able to reach it anymore later on. And yeah, you just have to see for yourself what works. There's a fly here. I hope it's not flying through the video too much. So I'm just lining up the corner here, also try to see that I'm lining it up with the pocket on the other side, uh, so that I'm covering that nicely. See that I've got it where I want it, I do. Oh, didn't think about that tape in the middle, maybe you should not place that there. Luckily it comes off pretty easy from that uh, jeweler if you haven't burnished it too much. And I have one on the side there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So this is our first attachment for the base page. So I'm getting the base page back in and I'm going to work on top of piece A. And I'm going to align that on my left hand side and I'm going to place it on top, not in, because we've already placed something in that pocket there. So I'm just doing what I always do with flaps. I remove my tape backing parsley. I'm going to line up the top, bottom, and my left edge. Hold it in place. And place it on there. So this is going to catch some uh, dust and maybe fingerprints and what I do is I use a dry microfiber cloth to uh, clean it up and that works pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to place that to the side and we are going to work with our pieces G and F. With G we haven't done anything, piece F has one score line, tape goes on the dented side and um, we are going to taper again and fold towards the bumpy side of that score line and we are going to place piece F on top of piece G to create a booklet just checking if everything is lining up Sometimes I miss cut or my paper is completely straight and at this moment I can still uh, yeah, make some corrections for that. There we go. Then we have piece H. Uh, again, one score line, tape is on the dented side and uh, you don't necessarily have to taper that half inch because it's not covering the whole page, but for some reason I always do it. Well, not always, sometimes I forget, but 9 out of 10 times I do it. And piece H is going on top of piece F, but on the open side. So we can open this up if you want and we are going to center it. That means we are going to place it about half an inch from top and half an inch from the bottom. 
so when I I'm always a little bit precise I'm not able to help myself with that I'm just making a teeny tiny tick mark and it's hardly even possible to see but it helps me when I'm going to place it I know that it has to be right there um, yeah let's place it like this remove the tape backing again partially try to find that tick mark that I've made it's hard for me to work on this side of the paper place it and burnish it on there then we have another flap piece I again one score line tape on the dented side tapering is not necessary but you can do it it's not wrong if you do it pull towards the bumpy side again and burnish again this one is going on top of your piece H on that same side so I don't know out of the top of my head uh, how much space we have to center it maybe I think three quarter of an inch maybe not even Yeah, so just try to find that center for yourself if you want to do it precise. Okay. Something like that. And make that little tick mark. Oh. Let's wait a little bit. So again I'm trying to line it up on that edge right there then we have our piece J piece J is going to form a pocket again so just like the previous pocket three score lines tape on the dented side and we are going to miter that corner and you do that however you prefer to do that of course Oop. and I'm going to fold and burnish those score lines again then what I will do is make again an angle here so my cut edge is right here I'm going to place it on my right hand side and then on the top I'm going to make a tick mark at one and a quarter like that and I'm going to cut that angle again This pocket is going on top of piece I and it should fit on there uh, exactly so and it does so that's great A little fiber there so again I'm just doing what I did earlier with the pocket I'm sticking those side flaps down with that bottom flap and if you miter normally you don't have any overlapping so then you're not able to do that and for this pocket that would be fine it will be fine for every pocket but it's just I found it was easier to work sometimes if it's um, sticking down already so I'm just going to start with the corner here I'll just remove that completely. Nice. 
And then we are going to need our piece acetate 2. AC, uh, no sorry, AC3 is what we are going to do first. This is uh, a piece of the Duralar that has is scored on two sides. Now I will show you quickly um, what to do when you score your Duralar. It's, you just score the course, I just get a little scrap piece here. What I'm using to score this is a little uh, embossing tool with a small round head. It's fitting uh, actually in between my uh, scoreboard. And I am going to, uh, yeah, you just place your piece in here when it says score at half an inch. You are going to place that at half an inch and really give pressure on it. And I'm also going towards the top. And I'm going over a couple of times times giving pressure and now you see it's already standing up so now I'm going to the other side and score it again and I think that's the best way to go to have it accurate and now when you're making a pocket it can be pretty hard because then you have to score again at half an inch but this is already standing up so you really have to hold it in place and then I like to score on this side of the board because I'm right handed and then again go and once you went over once it's easy to see where you scored and follow that same line so um, yeah i thought i'd just sh show you that that it's it is possible but you just yeah take some things in account now what you what we've seen is that this is already standing up and when i did it the first time i'm going to show you on this one it's a little easier um I really thought like, okay, now I'm going to fold it this way. But that's like folding towards the dented side of your fold. And um, my folds were off. It wasn't straight, so I thought first it's not working. But then I found that if I turn it around and I'm going to fold it against your feeling towards the other side, your fold is going to be more straight. So take your time on that again. It's, it's not easy. But it is possible. So I'm just folding onto that score line. And I'm also see if my piece is lining up on top and bottom. And then I'm using a bone folder to burnish that fold. And then when, once we've burnished it, it's really laying flat against the surface. I hope you can see that on camera. I don't know. But it's, um, yeah, it is a little bit harder to work with than with cardstock. But if you're, if you want to do it, take your time on it, you can do some really awesome stuff. So again, I just burnished and pulled that. And now what I'm going to do, because this is going to be form the stack pocket, but I don't have a score line here like I normally do with a stack pocket. I'm going to determine how high do I want this. This is just going to be a straight pocket, so I'm going for about three quarters of an inch. Or maybe an inch. Yeah, let's do an inch. Then I get a sharpie, and don't be scared of the sharpie, because you can wipe it off again. So you can measure this exact, you can eyeball it a little bit, but I'm going to mark where the bottom pocket ends there. Really tiny mark. Now I shoved it, so I need to place it back. And I'm going to do the same thing there. And then I am first placing my tape. I need to think about where it needs to go, but here I need it on the longer side and it's hard to see, but try to stay close to your cut edge, as close as you can without going over, because you want to hide that tape, because you don't want to have that tape showing once we, we are going to place pattern paper in there with a little border of course, and if you place it close to the fold edge, you will able to still see that tape after placing your pattern paper. So stay close to that 
cut edge. And here I need it on the short side. Right? Just check, check, double check. Yeah, on the short side. Close to the cut edge. So now I'm going to cut here on my half inch flap straight towards that Sharpie mark. So I've cut this straight. And then I'm going to cut with a slight angle from the bottom up to that Sharpie mark there. Not bad. And then I'm just using my thumb, go over that Sharpie mark a couple of times and it will be gone. Here again, I'm cutting straight on the half inch flap towards that mark. And then from the bottom, I'm cutting it with an angle. And try to wipe away that sharpie mark again. There we go. And now I'm going to see if I did a good job on my cutting. So I'm going to shove that in there. And you won't be able to go any further than where you start your angle cut. And that's pretty good actually. So now I can place that in there. Just make sure that you are pretty straight here. If you didn't do a good job, you can always uh, cut it a little bit extra on where you intend to go. Um, yeah, let's say I've cut it too low here, then it would be a little bit off like that. Really, uh, of course, this is a little bit exaggerated, but then I would cut it a little bit extra there so that I can place it straight in there. But this is pretty good, actually. Uh, oh, I wanted to say I need to erase my letter I, but if I'm sure that I'm going to place pattern paper there, then you don't have to. And I'm pretty sure that I am going to do it because I want to hide my tape. But yeah, those are things you want to think about because it's going to be hard to reach. So I'm just placing one side first, line it up with the edge. And then the other side. So there we go. A stack pocket with acetate. Now I'm going to make another pocket for the inside of piece H. In that your acetate two piece. That's going to go right there. Now what I've also tried is to make a little um, yeah, slit in it with my envelope punch board. But my envelope punch board didn't like that too much when I was doing that. So um, yeah, I decided not to do it. I didn't want to break it. So for the pocket, I'm going to place my tape. And again, this is going to feel like you're doing it on the wrong side. But I'm going to do it. This is scored. And this is standing up and I'm going to place it on the inside now here. And I also thought about doing this with quarter inch tape. So I was pretty sure that I was going to cover up that tape, but I felt like it didn't have enough surface to, yeah, the, the folded edge of your pocket is coming off your cardstock a little bit when you do that. And I didn't like that. So, but you can use quarter inch tape as well. Before I fold, I am again, going to miter that corner there and it can be a little bit difficult to see your intersection of the score lines Now we are going to carefully fold on those score lines. So I'm going to do the shorter sides first because I'm going to 
uh, stick the longer flap on top of that short side. This is also the reason why I'm really going over like three, four times when I'm scoring this because once you fold it towards this side, it's really hard to see that score line. So carefully burnish it. There we go. Now I'm going to peel the tape backing away a little bit here on the short side so we can stick that bottom flap on it. Get our booklet in. So I'm going to open up this one and I'm going to open up this one. You can place it here, of course, if you want to, but I've done it right there and I like it there. So I'm removing one short side completely. And I'm going to, we have already have some dirt on there. I'm going to start on this corner here, work my way in. And if I did a good job, I should have a little bit of space between my pocket and my score line. Trying to be careful here, line up that edge. This one is already a little bit loose, so let's fill it out a little bit. Try to align it along the bottom. And if it's not perfect, you know it's not perfect. If you are going to make this go in a way then your cardstock is going to bend, so... See, my cardstock is bending a little bit, but it's not too bad. I think I tried to pull it down a little bit too much here on the bottom. But that's fine. So this is the booklet part. And I am going to use a magnet to keep all those flaps in place. And this booklet is going to go in our pocket page. So I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to shove piece G in there. Like that and like that. So when we open the page, it looks like another page, but it's actually a booklet that we can take out. But you can also just do it like that. And this is quite bulky, so that's why we have that little gusset there. And now the only thing we have to do is our stack pocket here on the back side of PC. So for that, I have three more pieces of cardstock. So let's prepare those. We have piece K, L and M. And we are going to start with piece K. It's a pocket, score lines on three sides. And tape on the dented side on the three sides as well. And you are going to miter those corners. Just like that. And piece L is going to be a flap, so one score line, tape on the dented side, taper, it's necessary for this piece. And piece M is going to be a stacked pocket. So you can cut either way straight here on the short side, you have the half inch score line here. You can cut straight on that score line or with a really slight angle. And you are going to angle it from the bottom. And I don't know why I've placed tape here on the longer side. I wasn't thinking because you don't need it. I do that more often, but it's um, you don't need to, you only need tape on your short sides on piece M.
for Biscay. So we mitered that. I'm going to fold and burnish on the score lines. Just like that and I'm going to get my page in here so you can do it like this you can also lay it flat if you want to we can take this out for a second I always like to make my work surface as flat as I can get it so we are on the back side and I'm opening this up and we are working on our C piece Removing the tape back in there. And now I'm going to start on my left bottom corner. Because I don't want it to overhang there. It should fit on there, but you, you never know. And that wasn't supposed to happen. There we go. Line it up on that side. So I just like how easy this works for me with the pockets. And that pocket is in there. Then we have our piece L that's going to be the flap. So we've already tapered that. Fold on your score line. And did I place my tape on the right side? No, your tape for piece L. I'm sorry if I said it wrong before should be on the bumpy side of your piece so you can shove it in there and stick it onto your pocket now i've placed it on the dented side not the end of the world i'm going to fold towards the other side i don't really like to do that but it's not the end of the world if you have to do it and i'm going to place that in there now what i want to see is does that fit nicely if i have a little overhang which I have I'm going to cut that slightly there on the side because I don't want to have that overhang so I'm just eyeballing it but it's just a really tiny tiny bit like a really tiny here so let's see how that is now so when you place it in there, you want to still see your score line so it can fold over nicely. And that's a better fit for me. So I'm going to do it like this. So make sure that I'm able to see that score line and then push down on it. And I'm going to use a magnet to keep that in place. And then our final piece is our piece M. It's a stack pocket. Like I said, tape here is not required. Only tape on the short sides. And we are only folding on our flaps on the short sides, on the score lines. Now in my first page, I made a little slit with my envelope punch board. And uh, actually I did that because I thought I was also going to do it on the other pockets. What, what didn't happen. So if you do it or not, it's going to work either way. But... To have a cohesive look i will do it on this piece as well and i am going to make a punch with my flap open my half inch laying flat at two and a half inches and i'm going to do that on both sides of the piece And then I'm going to cut out that center part there. You can do that with your paper trimmer uh, or with your ruler and a knife. Whatever you prefer. There we go. Let me see. This is 
is it. So I'm going to fold on those half inches. I'm just using a paper clip for now here. To keep it lying flat. So, uh, not to because the pocket has to go in there. Um, but not so far. So fold it only on the short side and I'm, I'm able to shove it in there up to that score line. Make sure your line you're nicely lined up so again you are able to lay it flat again if you want to make sure you don't go over the score line there but that with the measurement it should be fine use your tools So I'm just leaving that tape there. I'm just going to cover it with pattern paper. It's okay. It's just a waste of tape. And that's it. Page style number one, constructed. So I did two of these pages. I'm going for four pages in the album. It's going to be quite a large album. But you can do, of course, as many pages as you desire and the page styles that you desire. So there we go. We can place stuff in the pocket here. And uh, here's the other one. Like what I did here is, uh, yeah, I placed a little tag there. I'm not done. I'm just starting with this. But and I've placed a photo mat there. So you can place a photo on it. You can see that through there, but I don't mind. Um, yeah, so you can use that areas there. And like right here, I'm just going to place one piece of, this is not stuck down yet, pattern paper. And as you can see with that, you hide that tape there. So we can just play around with the, with the elements. And what I did here is I placed my magnet on this flap. And I've placed it right there, but I'm kind of thinking that I might have to place one more in between the layers because it's holding up now. But I think when all the pattern paper is on there, it's not going to hold anymore. So I'm thinking I'm placing one more on this side or on, yeah, I think on this side. That's why this, this isn't stuck down yet. So probably I'll see. So yeah, page style number one, constructed. So in the next video, we will do page style number two. And I hope I see you in that one. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.